Hi you guys, this is Renata. I want to talk today about Bishop Carlton Pearson. Bishop Pearson recently did an interview with Megan Kelly, which I'll show you in a moment. But before I do that, I wanted to tell you a little bit about him for those of you who, who may not be familiar with him. Bishop Carlton Pearson is an award-winning vocalist and fourth-generational Pentecostal preacher who was mentored by the late Dr. Oral Roberts. Dr. Oral Roberts took him under his wing, treated him like a son, and they were close for most of uh, Carlton Pearson's life. When Carlton Pearson uh, was a young pastor, he started one of the first mega churches long before mega churches were popular and long before they were as mainstream as they are today. However, the bishop stirred up quite a scandal when he came out with his hell free theology. Once he stopped believing in hell and started preaching that there was no hell, most of his Christian friends turned on him. So he's coming out with a uh, newly released Netflix biopic, and it's called Come Sunday. And it tells the story of him becoming a, a Pentecostal bishop who, again, became one of the first African-Americans to have a mega church in Tulsa. He lost everything when he changed his beliefs. He lost his home. He lost his cars. He lost his congregation. He lost his church. He lost everything. So uh, decades after his painful experience uh, and all of the loss that he experienced and all of the rejection, he's still preaching, but he has a different mindset and uh, is very different from the way he started his ministry. So now he teaches what he calls the gospel of inclusion. And in his mind, it uh, his gospel, the gospel, the way he preaches it now, it includes everyone, no matter what you do on this earth, no matter how you live your life, everybody's included and everybody's going to heaven in his mind and there is no hell. So he, he says that his message is a message of acceptance and it's a message of love and it's all through spirituality. So many many preachers, as we know, who have been in the public eye, they've uh, faced a lot of scrutiny uh, due to scandals and uh, things involving embezzlement or having affairs and things like that. But Carlton Pearson's sense in the eyes of the church was that he is now preaching that there is no hell. And he has faced plenty of outrage in the Christian community because of his newfound beliefs. He believes that we are living hell on earth and there is no hell after death. The only hell that we're going to face is the hell that we're facing now. That is what he believes. And he believes that everyone goes to heaven no matter what. No matter how you live your life, no matter what's going on with you, that God is a forgiving God and everybody is going to heaven and there is no hell now he had that drastic uh change in his beliefs when he said uh, uh when his uh, grandparents died he said he just couldn't wrap his mind around the fact that his grandparents would burn in this eternal hell so he started thinking about it and praying on it and he said this is what was revealed to him through god as he said that there is no hell that it is a scare tactic of the church and everybody's going to have him. Now, I believe that what he is preaching is very dangerous. I believe that it is a false doctrine and that hell is absolutely real. And the Bible does speak of hell. And here are a few scriptures I want to I want to share with you because I don't want anyone to be deceived by his doctrine. Hell is real. Okay, so Psalms 9 and 17 says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forgot God. Matthew 25 and 41 says, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Okay, and here's a description, and there are, there are more scriptures. I'm just giving you a few, but there are more scriptures on hell. Um, and here is a description of hell, and this is Matthew 13, 41 through 43, and it says, The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, 
and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire there shall be welling and gnashing of teeth then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father who has ears to hear let him hear okay so those are again just a few scriptures on hell to prove that hell is absolutely real um, and here is a scripture i want to share with whoever is listening to this who does not know god as their personal savior and who does not have a relationship with god this is how you become saved it is romans 10 and 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus and shall believe in thine heart that god has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved so if you do not have a personal relationship with god you need to repent you do not want to be deceived by these false doctrines you do not want to live in eternal hell because hell is real so here is the video you guys of um, Carlton Bishop Carlton Pearson's interview with Megan Kelly and uh, please leave your comments what do you believe do you believe that there is a hell do you believe that as the bishop is preaching now uh, which he is calling his new doctrine the doctrine of inclusion which includes everybody um, and he just feels like you can do whatever you want it doesn't matter you're going to heaven um, and I personally believe that that was uh, his way of dealing with the trauma that he obviously suffered when his grandparents died. I think that he rectified that in his mind that there is no hell. But I'm telling you guys, hell is real. OK, so again, he has a, a, a new Netflix movie out on this subject. And um yeah just leave your comments leave your comments in the comment section and let me know let me know how how you feel about this do you believe that that uh heaven is real do you believe that hell is real do you believe that uh because many people are living hell on earth that that is the only hell that they will suffer and that um as the bishop is teaching when we die we automatically go to heaven that there is no hell Please leave your comments in the comment section. Um, please thumbs up this video and subscribe to my channel. And here is Bishop Carlton Pearson's interview with Megan Kelly. Thank you for listening. As we approach the Easter and Passover holidays, we're taking a leap of faith together. Speaking with some influential and innovative religious leaders and pioneers about God, faith, heaven, and hell. This morning, we are joined by Bishop Carlton Pearson a man who brought innumerable people together with his charismatic message. But then a voice one night from the man upstairs led him down a controversial path that cost him practically everything. There is life. There is spontaneity. There is joy. Bishop Carlton Pearson is an energetic... Dancing around, trying to fit, trying to find your place. Passionate. I was so overcome with love and captivating spiritual leader and leave you up there for a while oh. drawing his congregation in with flowing sermons and perfect pitch on me you could say pearson was born to be a preacher as a child our whole life revolved around the church i started preaching when i was 14 um i, I was licensed at 15 ordained at 18. he attended oral roberts university in tulsa oklahoma and oral roberts himself took pearson under his wing out of all the probably 25,000 students that had gone through there by the time he retired, no one had the kind of access to him as I did. He really, literally treated me like his son. You don't know my Fresh out of school, Bishop Pearson's popularity and message grew beyond anyone's expectations, including his own. I was the first African-American preacher on the South Side to start a church that was integrated and maintained it to where it became what they would call a mega church in, in this town, up, up to about four or 5,000. Bishop Pearson preached to millions all over the country. In 1995, he spoke alongside Reverend Billy Graham at the Oklahoma City Bombing Memorial. The best for Oklahoma and America is still to come. And was a spiritual advisor to President George H.W. Bush. But everything changed when Pearson had what he called a revelation from God. I believe people go through hell not ultimately to hell. Stop telling people they're going to hell. I said, I don't care if they're sitting there with a needle in their arm, drunk, smoking a joint, 
HIV positive. Tell them their sins are forgiven. There's no issue between them and God that hasn't been resolved in Jesus. That's all I said. If he didn't condemn, why do we? His new message did not go over well with his congregation or with high-ranking church officials. Before he knew it, he had lost everything and was branded a heretic. Preachers wrote letters denouncing it. I went from hero to zero and lost it all. Is there anybody you've loved in your own life who backslid and is in hell right now? My daddy's in hell. What about it? And did you love him? Of course I did. He was my daddy. But he beat my mama. He beat me. He was a fornicator. And now God's punishing him. He's suffering in hell. He's tortured and tormented for all eternity. So let me ask you something. Would you get him out of hell if you could? That was from the new Netflix film, Come Sunday, about Bishop Pearson Carleton. Back in the 90s, the bishop was a successful Pentecostal minister of a megachurch in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He held popular revivals across the country, counseled presidents, and on and on. But he lost it all when he says he received a direct message from God that went against the teachings of the Pentecostal church. Bishop, great to have you here. Thank you, Megan. And that message was that y there is no hell that people who aren't, quote, saved are not going to hell, that in fact we have a loving and forgiving God. First I thought there, there would, I believed in hell, I just didn't believe anybody would be in it because of the finished work of the cross. Uh, then I started thinking about the absurdity and the vulgarity of eternal torture. If it was purgative or corrective or remedial, I could understand some kind of hell, but when it's punishment, and little children, if you're 12 and over, <laughs> till you're 90 years old, would all go and be tormented. It just didn't, I couldn't reconcile that with the moral character of a God of love. So you come out and you say that to your congregation, 6,000 people, and it did not go over well. And not it did not all. go over well with the church leaders beside yourself. Mm -hmm. And within a year, you had lost your church. Yeah, everything. The property... My, my intellectual rights, the name, I had to sign off the, the, from the, the, uh, the uh, founder of the organization that I had founded, and it was just uh, pretty torturous. And lost your home? Lost my home. You lost your fortune? Your... My, in my inheritance, I didn't have any inheritance, but what I had saved, all my savings, 401k. Because that goes directly against Pentecostal teachings. A fundamentalist and Pentecostal teaching, the evangelical teachings, it goes against the Bible. The Bible can be very controversial because one day it says you love God and the mercy of God endures forever. How can mercy endure forever and hell endure forever? One would cancel out the other. And now you've gotten to a place that is more, shall I say, progressive. It, it's inclusive. Yes. It's loving. In the, in the movie, it walks us through how you had this very close friend who was gay. And initially you were advising him, it's okay to be gay. You just can't do, do gay. gay. Yeah. And then, and now you've evolved on all of that, yes? Yes. yes. And what, what's your belief now? That everybody, my, my and just like the makeup artist just said here, not trying to correct anybody, just enhance everybody, who you already are. Bring out the best in you, celebrate, own, honor, respect, love yourself, and be yourself. We spend our lives, most of us, impersonating who we think people want us to be. And we become a world of imposters and impersonators but when I stop putting on that air trying to please the people and I love people I had to uh, face the guy that I had never met mm -hmm. and now now you don't have all this money and you don't have the big 6,000 person church uh -huh. but you're preaching what you believe is God's kind and loving and forgiving message and and was it worth it I mean do you if you could go back now and do it over again would you well I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you uh, <laughs> And nobody would be interested. This, the movie magnifies and amplifies the message I thought the church wanted to mute. It's like uh, Jason Siegel, one of the actors, said to me, Bishop, so what are you feeling, vindication or, or uh, revenge? I said, no revenge. I do feel vindication, but more importantly, I feel indication, an indication that maybe the universe, God, has a more important uh, posture for this message that it really should reach masses. Netflix has 117 million homes. That's more than 6,000. Oh my, my God! <laughs> <laughs> we have a few million watching this show too. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard millions are getting this today. You know what? Thank you so much for your courage and your love. The, the, I highly recommend the movie, which is riveting and uh, sad, sad when you see the price he paid for his loving and kind beliefs and the non-acceptance within the community. But thank you for sharing it here. Pleasure, Megan. All I'm so best, proud Bishop. of you, too.